So welcome to the Zoom meeting on making the most of Saturn. Um, I, I wrote down a few things that I want to share and what happens, I, I realized whenever I'm doing these meetings is oftentimes I'll start to make notes. And then once I start writing, a lot of stuff just comes out that wants to be said as is. So you'll have to forgive me as I, um, as I read through some items and we'll go through it together. And then we can get on to some charts. And anyone uh, who has any questions along the way, feel free to chime in. So um, most of you already know, I'm, I'm sure, what all the associations and keywords are for Saturn. And so I just listed them here. We don't have to go through it all. But, um, you know, fear is one that I feel like can be really present for a lot of people, really get in the way. Um, other themes, maturity, um, Saturn represents time itself and physical matter. Um, at times, depression, it can be... Um, like nationalism, societal structures, man-made law. Um, and so on to the, you know, expanding into that. Um, so Pluto draws its influences from its, you can pull influence from Pluto's neighbors and that will, um, sorry, from Saturn's neighbors and that will really help you out. I think if you remember where Saturn is on the spectrum of things, so um, if you look at it from that, from that position, from where it is and its lineage with the other planets, uh, the expansiveness of Jupiter is met with contraction and boundarylessness is given parameters by Saturn. It's within Saturn that we're able to bring spirit into form and it's an indication of mastery and great accomplishment that spirit is able to create form in the first place. Saturn can be a tool for mastery when put to good use, rather than acting as an oppressor. Form requires some parameters, but this doesn't have to ultimately limit perspective. It is when perspective becomes limited that we become ruled by our structures. It is only when we are ruled by our structures that we become slaves to it. And Saturn can also represent slavery. So using the expansiveness of Jupiter to expand our perspective and to trust while allowing the innovative qualities of Uranus to inspire us forward is an essential element to making Saturn work for you rather than oppress you. Um, so out of the shadows and into the light. In all of the charts, all planets can be expressed through their shadows or in full light, whether their higher expressions are brought forth or not. It is my aim always to guide others in expressing their full light. And the chart provides a roadmap to this. When you experience a planet's shadow side, you are given clear indicators that this is an area where you are blocking light. Because as a culture and as a people, we have become reliant on structural forms and have allowed systems to become rigid. We come to see Saturn as an ominous force when societal structures become too dense. Without enough flexibility or room to breathe, we are placing too much credence on it and feel threatened when natural forces conspire to update the system as needed. We fear change, which indicates a lack of trust in every spirit and the very spirit that informs structure of what shape to take. Our ability to respond without fear or to respond in spite of fear to life circumstances helps to bring Saturn into its full light. So Saturn can actually help us to adapt when needed and to orient ourselves to changing circumstances when we're able to move forward with new circumstances or are brave enough to change our circumstances. Um, and I want to say this because Saturn is also, um, oftentimes associated with rigidity. And um, I feel like that's, a good, that's the case when we're reliant on structure as opposed to allowing structure to be something that is there to serve us. And so... Um, I like to say, you know, remind people that it's in our nature to adapt. And so don't feel like you have to get stuck with something. Know that when you take a chance and you take a leap and you go forward with something, even when it feels scary, know that Saturn's there to help you adapt to the new circumstances as well. Um, so when the sh shadow side of Saturn is ruling, our desire for reliability can stunt us. When we stay flexible and not forget the lessons of Jupiter, we can trust that spirit moves and directs matter. And let this be where we place our trust on the reliability of spirit to provide. 
When we are not rigid and allow for change, Saturn will help us to reorient, to make adjustments, to put things in order and to move forward. Overattaching to limiting parameters is what stunts this process. And as a cardinal sign, Cap Capricorn is more able to update systems when necessary than we give it credit for. We just need to relax and stay grounded as Saturn and Capricorn, you know, is with Earth, and then stay open to new ways of working with what shows up to adjust to new parameters. Understanding the parameters does not have to mean limiting perspective. One way that we can see where we are blocking Saturn's potential or blocking its light or being impressed by it is by seeing what it tells us about our fears. For this, we look at the placement of Saturn in the chart. When we can see where fear is presenting itself, our simple roadmap to success is by pushing forward anyway drudging through it, so to speak, which is familiar to Saturn, or better yet, trust your way through it. When you do, Saturn will reward you with greater success in this area, though we have to be patient for looking for results. And this is something that I say um, a few times in here, and it, it bears repeating as much as possible, but um, just that with Saturn, everything happens in time because Saturn is time. So that's where we can put our trust. And when you're afraid, just remember that everything happens in time. So Saturn is the cosmic midday. The cardinal signs mark the beginning of each season and the first of each quadrant of the chart. Aries is the cosmic dawn. Cancer is the cosmic midnight. Libra is the cosmic sunset. And Capricorn is the cosmic midday. It is natural then that this marks a place of productivity. The symbol of Saturn is a cross above with a Sith below. We, reach, we reap the rewards of our efforts, even if the effects of them are playing out below ground. Like tending a garden, certain steps must be followed and time must pass for the work to bear fruit. Saturn wants us to respect the timing of things. It slows things down for us and organizes them, puts them into a linear order. The results reveal themselves over time. This is Saturn. So on to my chart as an example. Um, I just want to get personal for a minute because this is all pretty personal going into my own experience with it. I, um, I experienced a, a pretty deep summer. This summer there was a lot, of, a lot of big things shifting for me around putting myself out there better. And Whenever Saturn um, stationed to go retrograde, it was at two degrees um, of Capricorn. And hold on, let me orient myself really quickly. Oh, okay. Um, so the, the big things that were shifting for me this summer had to do with Saturn in my chart and the um the ways that I've experienced community have are generally you know pretty scary for me and I, I think that I've I've tended to hide and hold myself back in a lot of ways and um it's it's interesting that right around the time that Saturn went retrograde was around the time that I launched my website and that was a huge step for me in putting myself out there and making myself available to the world, being honest about um, certain abilities that I have and wanting them to be put to use, but also just really being afraid. And so far my experience of having certain abilities, um, I guess they would be more like supernatural, you know, psychic type of abilities that uh, is an umbrella word for a lot of different things that I experience. And, um, a lot of my relationship with that has been more to the tune of, of fighting with being afraid of being seen. And a part of me is excited about potentially going out there and helping in a positive way and taking all the lessons that I've learned and using those to help other people. But I know that this is something that I have to be patient with um, because right now it's just all about me overcoming fear. And so there's, going through the process of maturing with that, going through the process of overcoming my fears, knowing that Saturn will reward me when I do. And, you know, bless Linda for continuing to invite me back. Um, every single time she invites me to come here and share, I have a mini panic attack. 
And um, it's just, it really pushes my limits. And I know that when it comes down to it, I don't think I'm afraid of looking foolish. I know that for me, it's um, a lot of issues around feeling like I have to get it right, feeling almost enslaved to the truth, um, being afraid of getting it wrong. So um, Jupiter and my son are together up in Virgo, and they are in a stellium with Saturn, um, a loose stellium as far as my son and Jupiter are concerned. But it, let me see here. So Saturn in Virgo and my son being in Virgo with Jupiter conjunct, that Saturn is very influenced by the, that Jupiter that's conjunct my son because the sun is ruling my Saturn. Um, that feeling, that Virgo feeling of having to get it right. And then also being that my Saturn is in the 10th house, um, what's come up for me a lot are past life memories of being martyred and past life memories of um, seeing people suffer and not being able to find the solution and find the answer. Communities that I was serving, um, in prior lifetimes where I felt like if I could just get it right, then I could save people. And there were people, it was during a time of um, where pagan communities were getting hurt, you know, by, by certain interests that were coming in and wanting to do away with that way of living close to nature and close to the land. And because I was working with those, um, working close in a close relationship with the land in order to help people, um, I ended up on the chopping block and I think of a few different lifetimes, but just watching the people around me that not being able to help them um, became a huge hindrance for me. And also just feeling, um, experiencing being strung up, you know, by over and over again, by external forces, um, by society, being excommunicated, going through lifetimes where I wasn't able to find my place after that. And so um, I have a lot of hangups around expressing myself out in the open. And, and I know it's not fully founded. I live in a very progressive community, but whenever I do put myself out there, I just feel like, um, I feel like I'm gonna die. So um, that's a really tough thing for me to overcome. And that my Mars was getting hit very heavily um, this summer as well as, as well as my Saturn. And so it was bringing up these issues for me. And um, I, whenever Saturn went direct finally on that day was the day that I found myself at a festival that at a prior year um, I had attended and felt really traumatized by feeling like an outsider and spent a lot of the time hiding. This year was really interesting because after going through a lot of lessons around a lot of themes, to do with um, coming out and allowing myself to be seen more, I suddenly found myself back in the same place in a completely different way. And it was the day that Saturn had gone direct. So um, whenever I just felt into the energy of what that was like, and I played with it a little, I found myself getting a lot of positive feedback from Saturn. I found myself getting recognized over and over again um, whenever I would show up. Um, I was embraced by strangers in ways that I haven't really experienced before and, and bringing a lot of those things forward. So, um, so I see that the rewards are there and I see that the fear is still there, but it's just a matter of chipping away at it. And because Saturn is showing me that I'm being blocked there, it's not Saturn that's creating the fear for me. It's not Saturn that is hurting me or making me feel like I'm going to die. It's the fact that I have wounds in that area. Um, Saturn doesn't hurt you. Saturn, um, you know, the, only, the extent to which I experience the shadow sides of Saturn, it's not because of Saturn. It's because where I'm blocking it um, being expressed and its highest potential, um, and its natural potential. Its natural potential just is the highest potential. And so I'm not experiencing that naturally. I'm experiencing the shadow sides because I've had all these prior lifetime experiences that created karmic complexes for me and Saturn's karma. Uh, because I developed these complexes around being seen and being afraid of being martyred, um, the, the fear is now there. 
And so that's me blocking Saturn. And I know my way to get back to it. Saturn is showing me. It's showing me that because I'm experiencing it that way, I'm blocking it. And it's showing me exactly how to get back into um, a place of strength with it and allow Saturn to actually really help and support me. Um, it's all about being in service out in the world, um, out in society, not just within the inner um, sanctity of my own personal tribe, which would be 11th house, but in the 10th house is telling me that I have to actually fully step out there and not care who sees me and put myself in front of the institutions and offer everything that I can from a place of service. So um, with having said that, I don't know that there's much more that I could say on that. Um, I'm just going to move on unless anybody has any questions at this time. All right. Um, do we have Kimberly? Can you guys hear me okay? Yes, I'm here. Okay. Um, so Kimberly, um, do you wanna tell us a little bit about why you volunteered? Whenever I, I put out the ask for a volunteer, it was with the criteria that um, we would be looking for people who are having a complicated relationship with Saturn for various reasons. So do you wanna say anything about, about that in particular? Or maybe just let me know how you're experiencing it already in, in your life, how it presents itself. Uh, sure. So particularly this year, um, I've been feeling the effects of it a little bit more, um, you know, especially around the eclipses. I felt it. Um, and it's, you know, I noticed the fear, like as you mentioned, um, coming up. And for me, it's very much about being seen. And when it comes to sharing about something that I love or talking about something that I love in a way that I'm recognized and reaching more people, um, like through my business. And so I had a couple of instances where I had kind of built up the courage over the last couple of years, building my business online. And then um, I started to have some challenging experiences during live streams where people would come in and just kind of harass me <laughs> and some odd things kind of coming up. And so that incited all that fear, it kind of stirred up all that fear of me showing up and talking about the things that I love and things that are a little more, you know, in the psychic realm and mystical and like I'm a tarot card reader. So talking about those kinds of things already puts me in a position you know, kind of like you, I think you can relate to this, like being that um, kind of a fear of being persecuted because you're kind of yeah. talking, addressing things from like past lives where we've been persecuted for speaking up about those things. So that's kind of what's been coming up for me. It's very much about communication and being seen and the fear around that. Right. And that's coming up for you generally um, recently, or is that something that's been kind of ongoing? It's, well, it's funny with Saturn, I've noticed um, when I was younger, I was okay being seen and kind of on the stage, like I would dance, like I was on the performance dance team. As long as I wasn't talking, I was okay being on a stage or being recognized. But, um, and I did like some modeling and things like that where I didn't have to talk. And then now that I'm older, I have this desire to talk and, and show up and share a message. You know what I mean? So that part is, that part is new. Yeah. And then when you, you show up and you talk, you, you find that you are met with restrictions from the outside sometimes or people maybe trying to shut you up a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Like kind of not taking things seriously or, or throwing in some drama. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Um, I want to, are you familiar with, with um, intercepted houses and signs, by the way? Yes, I am. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I just, it, it, I noted um, on my end that you, you have, um, you have some intercepted houses and signs. And so your, um, your eighth house is intercepted. And that's the sign that Capricorn is ruling, but um, Capricorn's also ruling the ninth house. And um, Capricorn is a really strong um, 
influence in your chart because it's ruling double duty, um, double, double houses. So it feels, it seems to me like as far as how Saturn is functioning in your chart, because Saturn is the ruler of Capricorn, um, it seems like it's actually showing up to be really supportive for you. It's just a matter of, it doesn't always, sometimes it feels like work to get to the support. Sometimes what it feels like to receive that support from Saturn, um, it's by challenging you from the outside whenever you step forward and then you're met with um, outer constrictions, it helps for you to affirm who you are and what you're here to do and to really own that and which puts you in a place of, of having to really mature those gifts and when you have to stand up for them. It's, I was curious to note um, to a little bit about your childhood and I don't want to put you on the spot for anything personal. And you did say a little bit about that, how it was, it was easier for you at that time when you were, um, when you're presenting yourself at more of a kind of a happy go lucky childish from a childish perspective. But I was wondering if you could say any more about that, if you felt, um, if you felt fully supported in your childhood at that time and, and maybe if what kind of a support your father was for you through that. Um, yeah, well, you can, astrologers are usually are not surprised at all when they see my chart that I'm the oldest of, mm -hmm. um, my siblings. I'm oldest of six. And my father was actually an attorney and an entrepreneur, you know, he had his own firm. So that's very Capricorn influence, right? Mm -hmm. And as far as like, you know, I was probably the normal, you know, patriarchal conditioning upbringing where, you know, girls are supposed to be seen and not heard children are supposed to be seen and not heard i was given a lot of responsibility at a young age being the oldest of a large family so that's how it affected me mm -hmm. right um yeah it's so the reason why i'd asked about that because I, I was wondering how that that mercury was playing out for you relative to that saturn being in leo if you felt like you got the support that you needed to be heard and it, it seems like um that that's maybe something that's come up for you a little bit later is that then you use time for you to speak up rather than um like to enter into a new role and then you have to kind of fight for that does that sound accurate yeah, absolutely. Like I have to be an authority. I'm an entrepreneur. I have to, you know, kind of have my sense of inner authority about what I'm speaking about. And I often do feel that um, maybe inadequacy because I, when I was younger, I did um, debate a lot with my father and um, he taught me a lot about that, but I was also ended up being very wrong. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Right. Interesting. Um, oh, okay. I, so I, I did want to highlight Venus in your chart as well, just because the sign of Libra is intercepted and that's got, um, and Pluto and your North node are both in that house. And so it seems like the affirmation that you got for your beauty, um, Venus being something that that is being expressed through is helpful. But then um, I'm wondering if there's been any struggle shifting from having to go from being recognized for your more Venusian qualities to saying, yes, but here's what I have to say. And so it just seems like that's an area of, um, of coming out. And that's an area that Saturn seems really, really supportive of. And that any time that you are actually met with any sort of anything that might contradict what your voices or what you have to say is showing up for you to, to um, to allow you to fully show up, that that is creating the right impetus for you to show up in new ways and maybe to keep an open mind about uh, what that opens up for you. Um, and so as far as making the most of Saturn, so to speak, that's just something that I feel like Saturn is really is really showing up for. So I, I wanted to put that out there, you know, to be in, in keeping with the talk. And um, unless you have any other questions, I feel like that's, that was the piece that I, I felt like stood out the most to me. 
I definitely resonate with that. Absolutely, 100%. And yeah, I, I like what you said about, you know, Saturn helping to helping us to build a structure that will serve us. And I'm, I'm definitely resonating with that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, you got it. All right. Thank you so much for volunteering. So then um, we're going to move on to Jody. Are you there, Jody? Yes. Okay. Um, could you speak a little bit about what you were um, volunteering from the perspective of with your relationship with Saturn? And also, I'm sorry, Linda, I don't have a, a clock handy showing my screen. I realize I'm a little, I'm neglecting the time. I was wondering if you could give me a quick update on the time. Yeah, we've got half an hour to go. Okay. All right. So I'm sorry, Jody. go right ahead. Um, well, Saturn is a part of my stellium. So, you know, being with the moon, that, that really was my, my biggest first obstacle. When I really started to understand astrology, I went back and started looking at the, the pivotal times in my life that things have happened. And basically I've been sat down like hard and I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> and so now I'm kind of being more proactive at trying to stay ahead of the game and kind of listen more. And being that it's sitting on um, Capricorn is, you know, Saturn is sitting on my midheaven right now and I'm coming up on a nodal return. Um, yeah. I'm feeling more of the cold side of Saturn um, almost in a protective sense with me now, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so that's, could you say a little bit more about what happens in the past? Like, and um, what's happened for you as the years have gone by when you've applied, you know, taking the time to slow down a little bit and what it was like before that point? Um, before that, basically without, you know, it's not coming from a place of uh, martyrdom or victimhood, but my mother basically ruled my life. So my mother was like my Saturn. Um, mm -hmm. so it's funny how it's sitting with the moon there. And, um, I basically, if my mother was a caregiver to my grandmother. So again, um, like, like, um, I'm sorry, what was her name prior to me? Very similar, um, things were a lot of responsibility. I was an adult from when I was nine, taking care of my grandmother, um, which I loved doing. And um, fast forward through my life, um, at 41, I believe, I kind of made a decision that I was, I needed to start to go on my path, which meant me basically cutting off pretty much my family. Uh, making that decision and I felt supported through that energetically not through what would be deemed the proper thing to do um, but being very raised in a very Japanese um, culture again same thing children are to be seen and not heard women don't have a voice um, you just listen and do mm -hmm. if that makes sense yeah yeah um so I I had taken some notes on on your chart, and I it I think it it makes a lot of sense that taking care of your grandmother with Saturn being conjunct the moon. Um, also, it makes sense as soon as you said you're Japanese. It, um, we grew up in a Japanese household, at least. I don't see your picture. I've got this all. Oh, I see. You're not on there. Um, oh. Oh, sorry. Hi, you are. Sorry, I can't see my screen when I have the the video images up. <laughs> so there you are. Um, yeah, with the Pluto and Uranus in retrograde, and with Uranus ruling that stellium, um, and quite a bit in retrograde in your chart. Um, did I see that right? Not too much. Just the ones that I'm seeing that feel really relevant. So the Uranus and Pluto. Um, I felt like there's a lot of stuff coming through with that stellium around past experiences of oppression, um, being in a, a, a structured system, societal system, and, um, and the way that that might have been coming through in, in family. So with that, um, with that influence, I think it makes sense because I know that the Japanese culture is just such a strong influence in the family. 
and that the families are really structured, you know, according to that. Um, with the, you know, your choice to kind of move forward and claim what you needed for yourself, it makes sense that that happened at a later age in life, you know, because Saturn can take a long time to mature. Um, I also am interested in the fact that that, that Aries is right there with it, um, because that kind of brings into that, um, the equation, the whole, you know, Aries being the fall of Saturn. And so Mars ruling Aries, um, I was curious to know how you experienced, um, you know, feedback in your family when you did try to, um, felt inspired to act, you know, sometimes that, that desire to just, you know, go, go, go with whatever is calls you moment to moment and a little bit of, you know, the, the buoyancy that can come with, with Mars as well as the, the rashness and then to feel like you were getting negative feedback from that. And I wanted to see if that was the case for you. Definitely. And I apologize for the noise. It's been quiet all up until okay. now. Yeah. <laughs> but um, as far as that, throughout my life, it was a lot of um, anytime I expressed something that I wanted to do or I felt an inkling towards or felt pulled towards that wasn't the norm um, was definitely shut down. Um, it was it was always um, a lot of bickering, a lot of and I my my first response after listening to, you know, just constant. Um, bick and I don't even know if the word bickering is the word, it's nagging. Um, I would just let things go and, you know, just forget it, let it go, just stop, you know, and that was my, my answer throughout, that was my survival pretty much throughout my life. It's funny, my dan dance was the only thing my mother allowed, so I took that to the furthest that I could, but again, it was never, nothing that I could take serious, let's say. Right. Um. Well, I feel like your chart is definitely, you know, affirming for you that these things were set up in order to help you work through things that from, were from a prior lifetime. And it seems like the extent to which you had been able to experience that and take what you needed to accept the, that you needed to move forward, the way that you arrived at those choices and the way that you were able to claim that, what you needed was a big piece for you and in, in clearing a lot of that out so that you can move forward on your journey and work on applying yourself to your community from a place of, of being in service, you know? Um, and I, I apologize. I don't know if you said this, but I'm wondering what kind of work you do now. I, I currently, my career has been in the hotel industry because again, that was what was deemed safe by, by my mother. And it was something that was just very naturally akin to. It just leadership and management came really quickly for me. And I still dabble in it now on more on my terms now. I'm not in it full time. Um, I'm segueing my life into saying I'm an intuitive. I do uh, readings. Um, using my intuition, I use cards. I, I actually incorporate chart work as well um, wherever I can to help people on their spiritual um path okay um yeah that that makes a lot of sense i um i had i'll the way that i read charts is is kind of interesting um i think it's a little bit different sometimes i struggle with with doing it um with this because i'll get all the messages and i'll have to go back and read and apply you know all of the technical terms to things but when i sat with this I, I took a minute and I just put my hands up and I asked Saturn, you know, I said, okay, you tell me, what do you want her to know? And, um, and what just came through really clearly was that you have so much to offer and that you have so much to share. And so that um, the, the Uranus, you know, ruling that stellium means that there's going to be some innovative qualities that come through in your sharing there's going to be um, that maybe having spent time um, develop being more natural to having more of like an objective viewpoint um, already. Um, having that be something that 
you can um, use for yourself to stay open-minded while things present themselves, while new forms present themselves in ways that you can um, take everything that you are naturally skilled at and give that to the community. And so um, just that you, you do have a lot to offer. Um, and then just applying that, that ability to be method, uh, methodolic, meth methodical, <laughs> thank you, um, to be methodical with that um, while still keeping an open mind, not letting Saturn restrict you, but allowing it to um, show you the steps and put things in order as they reveal themselves and just trusting too because um, sometimes you have to do one piece before the next piece can show up and so just trusting the the, the linearity of things um, as it's guiding you on a path to opening to new things if that makes sense because we we tend to um, sometimes attached to what is known for the sake of stability, for the sake of reliability. And so there's something about opening more to what is unknown and allowing that ability to, to be linear, guide you toward it step by step. I love that. That's yes. absolutely perfect. Um, my biggest desire is to help my people here at home. So. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely perfect. I look forward to going back and listening to this again. Thank you. Yeah, you got it. All right, it's good to meet you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for volunteering. Um, and I was gonna do a quick time check. Um, 20 minutes left. Okay, got it. Ah, I just messed it all up. Share. Just click on full screen. Okay, I got it. Thank you. Um, so for Don, are you there, Don? Do we have Don? We'll come back to Don. No, she's here, but she just has to unmute. Oh, okay. Is she on the screen that's empty? Oh, no, 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 I see. Perhaps just go to the next one. Okay, we'll come okay. back. So then we're on to Lindsay. Are you with us, Lindsay? I am right here. Okay, hi there. Hi. Um, so can you say a little bit about um, what, how you felt compelled to, to reach out and volunteer yourself with Saturn specifically? um how that criteria applied to you and maybe how you've been experiencing saturn thus far sure um i'm kind of like glancing at what you're saying here about the chart and i you've hit the nail on the head on a couple of these things um the relationship versus responsibility i think that's just been a lifetime lesson for me that took me a really long time to really understand and it really wasn't until i started uh, studying astrology that i finally really understood the difference between maybe growing up aging wise versus accepting and acting like a responsible adult like you could be 50 years old and still be acting and making decisions that were childlike and I could see that just taking responsibility for myself, um, my own happiness, my own vocation, my, my own path in life, instead of looking at others to direct where I needed to go was probably the biggest and hardest, most difficult lesson that I've had in the last two years. It's been big upheaval um, in my life. And I think that Saturn being close there to Chiron and having a Chiron return this year mm -hmm. was just adding kind of fuel to the whole fire. And I, I, um, and now I feel it again with Chiron going retrograde back in the being, you know, back in the Pisces, um, this movement, this, that whole kind of corner with my nodes being there in the sixth and my work, 
and my own like physical health too. There's just limitations too with aging. And I think it's, for me, the Saturn and the aging aspect of it is really big to me. Acceptance that, you know, I may feel like 20 in the inside and you know what someone referred to me as an elder the other day and i was like oh my gosh an elder <laughs> i'm like you know it's not bad it's not a bad thing i don't you know but i it's the conditioning right mm -hmm. around it um that i bought into that i had to just kind of unpack everything and and really look at what the lesson was here and that this is kind of like the beginning of something new for me so i really feel especially this next half, you know, it's just the culmination of all this growth happening, starting my own family, seeing my kids grow, um, and now reaching midlife at 50 and having the opportunity right now with Saturn to, you know, not look at it so much from a negative perspective and not be so fearful of, of Saturn and I, I try not to listen to and read things that, you know, when things are in their detriment, I'm, I'm just like, it's all good. It's got to be all good. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I'll, I'll piggyback on that saying that um, Jupiter is the ruler of my whole chart in every, every respect, you know, the ruler of my ascendant and it's on my midheaven and it's conjunct my sun and it's technically in its detriment. Um, but I find Jupiter to be extremely supportive for me, um, just very, very much so. The fact that it's in Virgo uh, means that it just wants to take that expansiveness and apply it to something practical, you know? So maybe yeah. it doesn't always, sometimes it might throw a little bit of a tantrum, you know? Right. Um, it just wants to be expanded. Thank you very much. But... <laughs> But that ability to take that and then apply that forward and give it the right amount of constriction, um, in your case with Saturn and, and Aries, um, can be a really useful tool. Um, and so, um, and I apologize if, if you already said this, I'm wondering what kind of work you do currently and maybe if that shifted for you at some point in life. Um, I've always done the same thing. And well, I should say I've done two things. There's like two tracks in my life. I have this day-to-day uh, -day accounting job. I've always done it. Um, I used to do it full-time. And then about nine years ago, I left my job and said I want to do something creative because I have all of this creativity in my self and in my chart. And I, I wanted to be a photographer and I wanted to be a writer and I was a blogger and I was doing all these things. And I, I missed the one rule that said, don't quit your day job. And I quit my day job. That's what I did. I'm like, I'm all in, I'm leaving my job. I'm, I'm doing this and I'm buying the big camera and I'm paying for all these things. And I just dug myself into the deepest debt hole that you can imagine. And one day I just said, that's it. I can't do this anymore. I need to do, even though I don't love it, it's a job, it pays the bills. I went back and now I've been at that same job now for the past six years. And now I feel like it's really run its course and I love astrology. So I've been studying for the last couple of years, but really in the last year I've studied like it's my job trying yeah. to learn all this stuff because I, I really, all these things kind of aligned for me this year and it was kind of like a coming out thing. I'm like, it's time. It's been part of my life. Why not, why not make it my, what I do, how I can be of service. I was tired of, um, the blogging industry was very much like, look at me, look at my stuff. This is what I'm doing. And I'm just, I don't want to focus on me. I want to help others. And, uh, I got into coaching too. I went through a whole coaching program a year ago. Um, and I started doing that and people are like, this is your jam. Like, this is, this is what you're here to do. So I'm going to combine the coaching and evolutionary astrology. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm happy. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I didn't quit my day job. I'm still doing my other job that pays for, you know, my studies and my books and, and things mm -hmm. like that. So I'm doing my Saturn. Yeah, you absolutely are. Oh, that's so great. Um, all right, let me get back to the chart here for a second and reorient myself. 
Um, yeah, so that feels good because then you can take that, you know, childlike wonder, you know, that you might have been able to access through that Aries that might have been a little bit frustrated by your Saturn and marrying those two things. Um, you can feel that, that freedom that you need that, uh, within a structure that feels supportive. And so that feels really spot on. Um, I also want to say something that had stood out to me heavily, um, was something that kind of lit up for me in your chart is that most of what you have going on is in between the second and the fourth quadrant, um, all the stelliums that you have. And so, um, the, you know, the second quadrant is more to do with understanding you know, yourself based on how you're, you're experiencing your environment. And, um, I don't know if you're familiar, I guess you probably know about all that, but just for list, those listening at home, the, the first quadrant, house one through three, has to do with just experiencing your environment, learning about, you know, what the environment is. Um, four through six is now understanding um, yourself. And so it's taking a minute to kind of, you know, acknowledge like, oh, wait, what is this, you know? <laughs> I've mm -hmm. noticed the environment and what is this whole situation happening over here? So then the attention goes toward the self. Um, seven through nine is, has to do with then taking this self and putting it out in the environment and trying to understand relative to um, um, experiencing yourself bouncing off of people in the environment, you know, with the seventh house being the beginning of that, that journey. And then the 10 through 12 it has to do with um, ha having developed that enough that you feel like you're in a position that you can go out and represent your environment, go out and speak for your people, you know, um, be in service to your community because you've learned what you need to, to be able to represent its needs accurately. And so, um, seeing how your chart was so heavily weighted between the second and fourth quadrants, um, I was feeling into the the direction that that Saturn really wants to take and I just felt like with Pluto in your 11th house it's pulling everything that you experience from that that third quadrant you know those stelliums that you have in the fourth and sixth and fifth houses um, and it's taking everything that you learned from that and it's wanting to be applied applied for your community um, everything that is personal to you, everything that you come up against that is a personal lesson is meant to be applied to that. And so um, that was something that I felt really wanted to be said as far as the, the best way to apply that. If you ever find yourself in a situation where you're coming up with, um, you're coming up against something that is a, a lesson to you that has to do with yourself relative to community, that it's it's about applying that then going forward to your work um being able to go out and represent others based on that so um unless you have any other questions um i'm not sure if i i may have said it all i'm not i haven't really read my notes <laughs> <laughs> that's great yeah thank you thank you oh, so much for your, yeah you're welcome your yeah um thanks for volunteering nice to Absolutely. meet you Absolutely. nice to meet you yeah and um, did we get Dawn back by any chance? And Linda, could you give me a time check? Yeah, 10 minutes left and Dawn is here. Okay, we got it. Um, so then Dawn, did you want, uh, were you, are you able to share with us why you had volunteered um, specifically relative to Saturn? What you, how you experienced that in your chart? Um, I know you know a bit about astrology, so you've probably already given it some thought. Go ahead. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, so uh, Saturn Saturn kind of drives the whole chart. It's in the fourth house. It's in Aquarius and Erratic, and it's the handle of the bucket. So everything leads to Saturn. I've got a wide grand cross, and everything, you know, is driven through Saturn. And since youngest, um, my mother was ill. Um, since I was young with uh, progressive non-recessive um, 
MS, multiple sclerosis. So she always needed help. I was the oldest. So family, taking care of family, being responsible was always the major theme, right? Um, never really got away from that, but would certainly buck that shit for a while there. Uh, kind of tiresome, you know what I mean? Yeah. And would find ways to try to escape, you know? So that kind of thing. Um, and then basically in my 30s, learned to deal with it, <laughs> basically. Right. Um, how did you deal with it? If you don't mind me asking. So uh, just, you know, learning that you don't escape those responsibilities. I mean, uh, they're there and you just take care of them. It's not like I was trying to uh, ditch family by any means, but really there was significant pressure and every once in a while it would explode. I remember, uh, you know, oh, some things like, uh, my mom just needed so much. She just didn't have the right mother ever and she never had the right care. And then my dad was not, you know, there for her. So he left it all to us. So I remember, you know, she just needed so much. Come into my 30s and I'm doing everything that I can to try to keep the family healthy, strong, together. Uh, you know, if it, I say healthy, strong, together, I mean afloat. I mean eating, you know. Yeah. So I, I, it's, it's such a, a heavy burden, but you just kind of go, okay, well, how can I do this? And, well, um, you just <laughs> you just scrap and try everything you can. Um, I, I wasn't alone. I had my sister. Um, so I would say that that's, uh, my Jupiter because my Jupiter is her North node and her North node is my Jupiter. So, um, that's that square to Jupiter. Sometimes we would fight, but mostly we were each other's, uh, rocks through that, that kind of thing. But I mean, you asked a specific on how I would try to buck out. Well, you know what I would I would have a boyfriend and I would go away for a weekend and, you know, I would put my, my brother in place or my sister in place to take care of my mom and maybe they would and maybe they wouldn't, you know what I'm saying? But it, end result, it would fall to me to be responsible. And so, I mean, just that kind of thing, you know? Um, so... Uh, the fact that Saturn is conjunct your Vesta was something that felt really relevant to me, not just in the fourth house, but the fact that, you know, Vesta is the, the daughter of Saturn. So that's bringing that family element in with Saturn even more so. And I feel like this, it's less to do with what Saturn represents as far as, um, well, I mean, with that relationship, I feel like it's, it's the, the archetype itself that your, your family is creating an opportunity for you to really um, do your duty to that archetype and that there are things that are playing out that you signed up for just from before and beyond what is obviously in front of you. Um, as you were saying all of this, I got, um, I just felt like I got a really strong clarity and affirmation that what you're doing yes it's it's in service to your family and there is a bit of a martyr aspect to it um looking at saturn being ruled by your uranus which is conjunct to your pluto um both in virgo um i i understand you know i'm getting a sense of how difficult that can be and usually um I'm looking for ways to, to find that it's, you know, oh, we're just blocking something easier or something better from happening. But in your case, it feels like you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. That there's, totally. uh, yeah, that you're, you're clearing a lot of karma, you know, for your family, right. for yourself. That there's, um, <laughs> totally true. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, Saturn's karma too, and it's time and being retrograde there with Vesta and Chiron all retrograde. 
um, you know, Vestas, the Vestal Virgins, the ones that would guard the flame at the temple. And it was just a sworn duty that they had to live their life um, from this place of purity to keep this flame going um, for, for everybody. And right. so clearly you're, do, you're doing that in your family, but not just that. Um, it's, there's something from prior lifetimes that, that you had um, experienced with them. You're not just getting yourself, you know, yourself clean, but um, and not to suggest that like, oh, you're suffering because you did anything wrong. It's that you have the opportunity to clear up some karmas for yourself, but even doubly so because of how much you're healing for them. Um, what you took on in this lifetime is going to free you up for, um, for a lot more ease, you know, the next time around. Um, it's a huge service. And it is, it is, you are in the position of the martyr. But that um, any way you can find yourself, you know, find to support yourself through it, you know, it doesn't mean that life has to only be drudgery. And I'm sure that there's, there are plenty of things that you get to enjoy. Um, but in this context... Yeah. Um, but in this context, it's actually um, a higher calling that you're fulfilling and that you will get rewards, you know. Um, Saturn will reward you. It just, it does. And it's just a matter of trusting that even though you don't see the things happening necessarily in real time because Saturn is dense, um, it's sending a lot, a lot of nourishment to the roots below the ground. And that you see, you know, you don't, you don't see it when the little seedling is doing its job under the earth, but when it sprouts up and you get to see the fruits of that, it might be for something that happened, you know, some, something that you had done, you know, two years ago, three years ago, you know, all of a sudden sprout up as some liberated aspect now that you get to enjoy something that you cleared for the family, that you cleared for yourself, um, just one piece at a time. And so it's just a matter of being patient with that. And oh man, I, I don't need to be. It's already here. Um, oh, good. I'm sorry. Could you hear me? Yeah. Uh, it's already here, the benefits or whatever. That martyr thing, you know, that was earlier times. Uh, basically, um, I stepped back from my mother a little bit in order to allow, you know, other family members to step up to the rightful role that, you know, everybody should be taking. Yeah. And uh, it's did well. My brother stepped in, you know, my mother started getting very, how can I say she, she's trapped, right? She was trapped. Yeah. She passed in 2014, but she was totally trapped in her body. So she started getting kind of, um, you know, nothing I could do was right. It really sucked. You know, there I was obviously. So, you know, I took a look at it and I said, this. you know, I you uh oh. Always need me. It doesn't have to be always me. Yeah. yeah Sorry, you so dropped out there for just a good. minute, but I, I you dropped out for just a minute, but I think I understood what you were saying. Just that, um, they'll they'll no, learn too. it. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, you can keep going. Anyway, so now I take care of the now I take care of my sons, my children, and children, and my life is ecstatic, and it has been since March, and. I really, really uh, tossed and turned over that one. Should I, you know, quit mm, saving for my retirement in order to take care of the babies? And yes, I should, because you know what? There is nothing more valuable in the world than the children in your family. And there's nothing more valuable in the world than children. So uh, doing this, I mean, anybody could say, oh, well, you know, she's pulling the martyr again. No, I'm not. I'm freaking doing it for everyone in the whole family. and the whole world and me I, I, nobody could have a more beautiful day than i have every day yeah yeah and people can be the martyr without being the victim too you know yeah so it's not like um yeah. i'm okay to give it up I, I, hard yeah um yeah i i i don't i just got a message i don't know what it is maybe i'm not great at doing full screen Oh, the message is we're out of time. <laughs> okay. Yeah, if you'd like to Thank wind you. down with some final comments and then we'll yeah it to the audience. Thank you. Absolutely. So, um, I, yeah, I want to say that you had said something about, um, you know, spending, using your retirement to take care of the grandchildren. 
And I want to just affirm that your grandchildren are your retirement. That everything that you've put in, it sounds like um, you've already been seeing all of the different things that have been able to come from that and all the ways that different family members have been liberated. And it's, it's a lot for a person to take on to be willing to heal intergenerational wounds. And so you did that for your grandchildren too. And right. Saturn, yeah, Saturn wants to reward you so that everything that you have with your grandchildren is something that could only strengthen. And I would just ex only expect that you're gonna see yourself receiving a lot of support being reflected back at you through them. So, you know, as it should be, our grandchildren, you know, are, are, are they're just your retirement. So. They're my pride and joy. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Dawn. And so being that we're Thank at so time. Much. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't know that we have time for any final questions unless anybody has something just incredibly pressing they want to jump out with. Otherwise... Well, we actually don't have time. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Okay, if you could just wind down now and uh, yeah, we'll catch you next yeah. time. Thank you so much, Melanie. Beautiful meeting, great volunteers. Thank you so much and we'll catch you next time. Yeah. Would you all thank please you. thank Melanie Dawn. Yes, we'll see you next time. Thank you guys. Good Thank luck with you. The Thank you, Melanie. Thank, Thank Melanie. you, Melanie. Thanks, Melanie. Thank you.